Hey there, everybody. Good morning. It is Sunday morning, May the 8th, 2022, 8 o'clock in the morning. And here in the United States, it is Mother's Day. So let me start by saying Happy Mother's Day to my own mother, Sharon Stiff. You'll see her liking the... Uh, broadcasts or loving them sometimes. Uh, there's always a, a wave and a heart or something like that that she's popping on there. So happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day to my uh, wife, Shannon. Uh, also mother to my children, Winston and Nicole. She's done a fabulous job through the years, loves our family and cares for us all very much. So happy Mother's Day to these two dear ladies in my life. And I could go on and on with others but I shouldn't because we've only got 11 verses here and it's not going to take long. And you've got a busy morning today and church today, as well as celebrating mom some way, somehow, I'm sure. So let's pray, jump into Hosea chapter number six. Be sure to turn your Bibles there with me and follow along. Father, we ask your blessing on our reading and study today. Thank you for this day of observance of uh, to, to remember mom's in our lives. Thank you for these dear ladies. Thank you for this book. Help us to learn and grow from it today. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. <coughs> Pardon me. So Hosea 6, very short chapter, only 11 verses. God has called on Israel to repent and to return to him. They've played the harlot. They've run around on him. Now he wants to see them back. So what is their response to this? Verse number one, come and let us return unto the Lord. There you go. That's the best response you can hope for, isn't it? For he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. So even though the pain that we're feeling because of the uh, captivity that we've been finding ourselves in and the struggles, first off, they know it's self-inflicted. But the same Lord that caused the captivity can deliver from captivity. The same Lord that caused the pain and difficulty can redeem from the pain and difficulty. Verse 2, after two days, he will revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. There's a bit of foreshadowing of resurrection there, isn't there? Verse 3, <clears throat> then shall we know if, the, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain under the earth. So notice it says, if we follow on to know the Lord. Remember, two chapters ago, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. You know, the, the children of Israel, they were still going through some of the rites and rituals the sacrifices and so forth, but not always to the Lord God, sometimes to pagan gods, but sometimes to both. And so he says, you know, you're not getting this. You're not understanding the point behind what I'm having you to do. You lack a knowledge. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. You don't know why you're doing the things you do. And I'll tell you, it's as important to know why as it is to know what. And so when we're teaching folks the Bible, we have to explain to them the whys behind uh, the things that God commands us to do. And so they are going to follow on to know the Lord. And it says that he'll come unto us as the, the rain, rain is what the soil needs to grow. Rain is what the soil needs for nourishment. And he calls it the latter and former rain. The former rains come in the fall when the uh, precipitation is used to soften the soil and to moisten it and to keep it moistened throughout the winter months. And then the latter rains come during the springtime when everything has thawed and, and the, the fields are going to, again, be saturated with water because it's going to take all of that moisture to help the seed germinate properly. And so God brings what is needed is the point here. Verse 4, O Ephraim, Israel, what shall I do unto thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as a morning cloud, and as the early dew it goeth away. Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and thy judgments 
are as light that goeth forth. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. He's, look, there it is again. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. He said, look, I wanted you to participate in mercy, not sacrifices. Uh, you know, I don't want you to slay your enemy and then sacrifice on behalf of that sin. He wants right doing. He wants knowledge of God more than just sacrificial offerings. Verse 7, but they, like men, have transgressed the covenant. They have dealt treacherously against me. Gilead is a city of them that work iniquity and is polluted with blood. And as troops of robbers wait for a man, so the company of priests murder in the way by consent, for they commit lewdness. I have seen an horrible thing in the house of Israel. There is whoredom of Ephraim, Israel is defiled. Also, O Judah, he hath set in harvest for thee when I return to the captivity of my people. So as eager as the people are to return to the Lord here in verse number one, come and let us return unto the Lord. God lays it out for them and says, you know, if you want to come back, we're going to have to explain what the real problem is because you don't understand what the real problem is. You think you're not sacrificing enough and that's not it. He says, you don't know me. I don't know you. It's a relationship problem. It's like husband and wife. That's the two, uh, to the relationship rather that this whole book is using to portray. When you got a husband and wife, and and they're not getting along, you can't say, well, it's just because you didn't take out the trash. Well, no, that's not it. It's not the trash. You two aren't getting along. There's a problem with the relationship. And that's what God is telling his people here. It's not that they're not doing the right things. It's that their heart isn't in the right place with him. All right. That was pretty short and sweet and simple. And boy, but that don't miss that truth there. You know, that's why we have the Lord's Supper. We stop what we're doing to remember why we do what we do for the Lord. How about the church at Ephesus in Revelation 2, where Jesus has John write the church, the letter that says, you do all these wonderful things. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. They ruined the relationship. All right, I'm going to leave you alone with that. Thanks so much for watching. As always, like, love, and share the post. Let people know that we're out here, and we will see you tomorrow morning for chapter number seven. That'll be the halfway point of Hosea one more week after that. God bless you. Thanks so much for watching. Happy Mother's Day.